Hey, Gopher fans, it's Mike Grimm from Gopher Radio and GopherSports.com, and we're going to talk some soccer here. In fact, we're on the soccer pitch, Elizabeth Lyle Robbie Stadium, with brand new Golden Gopher soccer coach Aaron Chastain. And coach, first of all, uh, welcome home. Thank you very much. I'm really excited to be here, excited for the season to kick off in August, and it's a really special moment for me and my family. What has the last uh, handful of weeks been like for you and your family? It's been a whirlwind. Um, I think, you know, the interview process felt like it went really slow, and now that this happened, it's like, oh my gosh, full speed ahead. So I think it's um, a really exciting time. Um, this, as I've, I've said multiple times, is a dream opportunity for me, so I think um, everyone's making me feel right at home. You are from Minnesota, from the Twin Cities, uh, played soccer here at the University of Minnesota, basically back in, in the infancy of the program. And uh, you think about how women's soccer has advanced over the years, and we'll talk more about that in depth because you have some family ties to some of the big moments in soccer. Um, what, what, what is it like to be back uh, coaching now at a place where you played and, and helped build? Yeah, I mean, it feels surreal, really. I, I think um, to see the stadium and to see the facilities that the University of Minnesota now has that weren't here when I was here, we played across the street, um, it's just incredible. I, I think the support that prospective student athletes and our current team have, it, it goes above and beyond. And really, the student athlete experience is second to none. So I think to be here and to be leading this team of young women is just a, a dream come true. Yeah, were you surprised to see some of the facility upgrades from when you played to, one, the stadium where we're sitting is, is so nice, but then the facilities on the main campus, uh, you know, the Beerman uh, and the Land Lake Center and, and those things. Yeah, I was, I was really surprised. I, I had been back to this field, so I knew that this existed and how awesome it is, but I hadn't really been on campus. And so to walk around campus and see everything that's been built is, unbelievable it you know and when I when I went to school here I didn't think we lacked anything but it's now seeing what you can have is is awesome tell us a little about your background your family background and uh, and, and how that transitional law work uh, as you all get back here to Minnesota yeah well um, I have I have two daughters 10 and 12 Harper and Brooklyn and then my husband Chad and so that should be a pretty easy transition for us Minnesota is super familiar my whole family still lives in Minnesota so I have I have three brothers um, and my parents and they're all still local so I think that makes everything really smooth in transition for us to get back here and um, I know they're ready to come out to ELR and, and support the team and program and they'll probably be our biggest fans. <laughs> And you have uh, ample coaching experience, obviously coming from DePaul, where you won Big East championships. Uh, prior to that, uh, assistant coaching experience at Santa Clara, who was coming off of a big year, obviously, as well with, with that storied program, and at Northwestern with some Big Ten before that. So kind of take me through uh, how your coaching philosophy was built over the years and what will go for fans see from your teams uh, when you get them coached the way you want them. Yeah, well, I, I think first and foremost, I've had some incredible mentors in the game. Um, at Northwestern, I worked under Marsha McDermott, who is a wonderful coach she was one of the she was the first female professional coach back in the old professional league that won a championship um, and then when i went to santa clara i worked under jerry smith who obviously just won his second national championship so i think to learn from two really different styles and different people but both winners and awesome coaches whether it's in, inspiring a team or tactical coaching i think i've really been exposed to some awesome leaders um, and then to be able to use that and have my own style um, at DePaul leading my own program has been, has been really awesome for me. So I think taking from some different experiences and, and being able to really delve into my philosophy, which is, you know, obviously just to build wonderful leaders on and off the field, to get teams to reach their potential, um, and to win Big Ten championships. Is your style, would you say, more offensive-oriented, defensive-oriented, a nice combination, or, or how would you say? Um, it it's probably a combination, and I think uh, I'll really evaluate this current group and see what style is going to suit the personnel the best. But I think it's fun to play an attacking style, so that's certainly we'd like to score a lot of goals, celebrate a lot of goals, and, and I look forward to doing that on this field. All right, so we hear the name Chastain, so when you're talking soccer and specific women's soccer, you have to say, geez, I wonder if there's any relation to, to Brandy Chastain, and in this case, uh, there is a pretty close connection. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, Brandy's obviously my sister-in-law. Um, she's been also a wonderful mentor for me. Obviously, when you can achieve at that level, and that takes a certain level of talent and 
mental fortitude and commitment. And so to see her through some of her journeys through the Olympics and World Cup has been really exciting for me. Obviously, I didn't know her in 99 when she had her really big moment for women's soccer, but I know I watched that. And so I think now to have watched that and know that I can call her up for advice or um, she'll come out and support the team, I think is huge for, for me and for my family. And we're really proud of Brandy. I, th I think she was a pioneer um, in women's soccer and she was really accessible. And I think that's such a great quality to have as, as a famous soccer player where, you know, young kids can say, sign my, sign my, um, sign my piece of paper, sign my ball, and, and they're really accessible. So I think she set a, a nice bar for that. And you think about that moment, I mean, how important in the history of women's soccer, particularly American women's soccer, in terms of the growth. I mean, obviously winning the World Cup was big in, in uh, on U.S. soil, but from that point, I'm sure you're seeing the, the, the results, coaching kids who probably either watch that or see the replay and have gotten interested in soccer. Yeah, and, and really soccer's exploded, and I think that's a big reason why, just like you said. Um, you know, you're seeing now the U.S. national team games sell out. You're seeing youth soccer exploding, so many different clubs and opportunities for young girls to play. So I think it's really exciting time for, for youth soccer, for international soccer, and certainly for collegiate soccer. And um, to be the division, a Division One program in Minnesota and represent the state, I think is huge. Twin Cities and Minnesota in general too has been a, a good soccer area uh, in terms of its growth. I know they, they, we've coined the term in recent years, rock the Robbie. How important is it to, to rock the Robbie every time you guys are here and to you know, uh, you know, know, create interest here in a city that, that is pretty uh, lovable about soccer? Yeah, I think it's super important. I, I, I think one of the things that you immediately notice about Minnesota soccer is how much their attendance numbers are every year. And it's, I think they average over, or we average over 850 fans a game. And I only see that growing. Um, so it's super important, I think, to put young girls in the stands, to watch these talented young women perform and compete and really just be great role models for them. So I, I really hope that environment can, can be what it is and even more. All right, last one for you, recruiting philosophy in regard to um, you know, and, and here in Minnesota, we're always saying, hey, can you keep the kids home so that yeah. we know about that? But what is uh, what has generally been your philosophy in recruiting and, and how might it or might not it change now that you're here? Yeah, well, I think I've always strived to, to add talented student athletes. So not just athletes and not just students, they have right. to be both. And I, I think we can absolutely draw that here at Minnesota. Certainly keeping the top kids home is a priority. And I think for me, having done this and having chosen Minnesota as a local kid, um, having a wonderful student athlete experience here, I certainly feel comfortable that, that I can sit in a room with a student athlete and her family and say, you are gonna get taken care of, you are gonna get an awesome education and you are gonna reach your potential on the soccer field and help us win championships. And I lived that and so I, th I think I can, um, I think I can make that happen for a young woman. So um, really excited about, about recruiting high level student athletes to Minnesota and um, certainly we'll get some out of state kids too, but um, we will have a big emphasis on, on these great in-state young women. Very exciting times, no question about it. Welcome again home and uh, we'll look forward to seeing the Golden Gophers out here on the pitch here this fall. Yeah, thank you very much. All right, there she is, the brand new coach, Aaron Chastain, Gopher fans.